Restoring cars or motorcycles means that you're going to be faced with refurbishing all sorts of small parts. Once they've been cleaned, they need to be protected in some way to stop this rust coming back. Zinc coating has long been a favourite on metal components. This is a commercially zinc plated bolt. It's been zinc plated using added brightness which gives it a slightly decorative finish. Here we've got a bolt that has been commercially zinc plated with no brightness. That gives a longer lasting finish but not quite so attractive. What we're looking at here is a zinc plated bolt that's part way through its lifespan. The zinc coating has started to fail but still providing just a little bit of protection. This can take anywhere from 5 to 10 years depending on the atmosphere that the parts are subjected to. Now I want to make it clear that I've never zinc plated anything in my life. It's a completely new process to me, but I've been to the YouTube University for four nights in a row. I've had a good look at how other people are doing DIY zinc plating, and I've decided that it's something I can handle at home, and I wanted to show you how I'm doing it from scratch with zero experience. Now this looks as though I've been doing my shopping. Most of these are household items. Many of these things can be found in the kitchen or the laundry. And these are all the ingredients needed for zinc plating. I've got some duplicates here because there are choices in the chemicals that you use. But basically what we're trying to do is clean the parts aggressively with a caustic wash that's going to remove any grease and oils then we're going to etch the surface with an acid etch and that will prepare them to be zinc plated in the electrolyte the first thing we're going to do is clean the parts with a caustic wash and that can be done in two ways borax gives a nice gentle clean and will remove waxes and oils but it could take several hours. Caustic soda is a much more aggressive way of doing it and it will achieve the same effect in just minutes but you must wear hand and eye protection. The acid etch once again it can be done slowly with citric acid. Citric acid is found in the kitchen, it's used in jam making, it's also used in confectionery. If you want a more aggressive etch you can use hydrochloric acid. In America hydrochloric acid is known as muriatic acid. It's very dangerous, you will need nitrile gloves and eye protection and it's a good idea to use this outside because the fumes are awful. It's no point in using a COVID mask or a dust mask, it won't have the right effect. You need a full gas mask if you're using this indoors, it's much safer to use it outdoors. For the zinc electrolyte we're going to use common old white vinegar. It's a very mild acid. To make it conduct electricity a little better we're going to use table salt or baking soda. Both work just as well but I'm just letting you know what can be used. We can also add 
quite a large amount of sugar. A cup full of sugar dissolved in warm water or warm vinegar can be poured in here and that takes place of the commercial brightener which will give us a nice bright finish on the bolts instead of the dull finish of pure zinc. So that's the chemicals that are needed for this process. Now let's have a look at the hardware. Now as I mentioned earlier, we need three containers. These three containers should be chosen for their volume. I've chosen five litre containers, which is about one gallon, because they're deep enough for me to dip in the parts that I will be needing to plate. I've chosen containers with lids so that when I finish work for the day these chemicals can be covered up, kept clean and they can be stacked for storage and subsequent uses. We need zinc. These are zinc anodes from a marine shop. They're available in many different sizes and shapes. They are used as sacrificial anodes to stop corrosion on boats and they're affixed to the hull and the engines and drivetrains of all seagoing vessels. It's quite cheap. These two rods were $10 each. They will last me for many, many uses. The process we're using is electrolysis, so we're going to need a power supply. I've got here three small transformers that are power supplies for cell phone chargers, printer drives and NICAD battery chargers. Each one has a different capacity. This particular one is 2.4 volts 120 milliamps. That's very low powered. This one here is 9 volts and 1 amp. That's quite a grunter. That would be used when I'm plating large surface area items. This one is 6 volts 300 milliamps. This would be my mid-range transformer that I would use for medium-sized jobs. It's something that you're going to have to experiment with. There are calculations that can be done for the surface area and that will give you the amperage, but it's very complicated. Far best to just do a few batches and learn for yourself. Other items we're going to need are a pack of jump cables. These jump cables, 10 in a pack, came from an electronics store for $10. They're going to be used to connect the power supplies to the rods and also to the items that we want to plate. We're going to need some fine copper wire. This was salvaged from old wire cables that I stripped the plastic off and this copper wire is going to be used to suspend the components that we're going to plate into the electrolyte. We'll need a pair of pliers for cutting the wire and tying off and we'll need some nitrile gloves and a pair of goggles because the hydrochloric or muriatic acid is very dangerous. The first thing we have to do is fill the container with vinegar. To improve the electrolytic qualities, we can then either add a tablespoon of baking soda or a tablespoon of salt. We'll stir that in. And 
And then the next thing we have to do is put both of the zinc rods in. And we're going to connect those zinc rods with two of the jump leads to the smallest of the transformers, which will give a lovely slow effect that will transfer the zinc ions into the electrolyte. So for this process, the transformer can be connected either way around, it really doesn't matter. But for the actual zinc electroplating, it has to be connected with the negative terminal connected to the item that you want plated and the positive goes to the zinc electrodes. You may have a transformer that you use for other jobs and you might not want to cut the plug off. So, if you get a small rivet or a nail or a pin, you can push that down the center and you can then connect your connectors to both sides of it and you can commence making your electrolyte. I've now plugged in the two electrodes. They're sitting in the vinegar. They must be kept away from each other. You'll see that we've got just one terminal gassing. That's the negative terminal. We're going to leave that for 20 minutes to half an hour. And then the electrolyte will be ready to use. While we're making the electrolyte, the next job to do is to create the caustic wash. There are two ways of doing it for a fast, effective caustic wash, but with a few more health and safety hazards, you can use caustic soda. Or for slow and safe, you can use borax. I'm going to go with the caustic soda because I'm taking the precautions and we're going to use around 250 grams of caustic soda which is a cupful, half of this container. We'll give that a stir. There's a chemical reaction that goes on while this is mixing. That creates a bit of heat. That's okay, don't be alarmed. So we'll stir in the caustic and I'm going to wire up the first lot of components that I want to plate and put them into the caustic wash. To give you some idea of how effective the caustic wash is, this is a greasy and oily hammer and you can plainly see where just a few seconds of stirring has stripped the years of filth off the hammer handle. The next thing we're going to do is add the hydrochloric acid etch. This is extremely dangerous, extremely toxic and must only be used with adequate ventilation. So here's the parts strung up on a copper wire. It's very important that in the electrolyte they don't get shaded from, from the zinc cathodes 
because the zinc plating won't go around corners. That's why we have two electrodes and not one, so that the electrons and the zinc particles can transfer from both sides. So the first thing I'm going to do is leave these in here for a caustic soak for a little while. That will ensure that there are no grease deposits, oil, on them. And the next thing we need is a margarine container full of deionized water. or muretic acid. It's time to give them a rinse in the deionized or fresh rainwater. Once that's done, they can be arranged on a metallic rod placed across the plating berth. Your articles should start bubbling and your electroplating. In the meantime, I've got my second lot of parts in the acid here. They've been previously cleaned, but unfortunately they were left to rust over again. So I'll leave them in here for 20 minutes to half an hour, clean all the rust off, then they can be washed in the deionized rainwater in the all important margarine container, and then they can go in and be plated. Well that's 30 minutes. 30 minutes is enough to give these the appearance of being zinc coated. If you look closely at the wire you can see how there's a tide line. The copper wire has been zinc plated below the line of the electrolyte. So I'm going to take these first parts out now and string up some of the next parts. I'll put the brake hose back in because that's only been going for a short time. And I'm finding out that it's important to move things around so that they get an even coating. I think it's important to separate parts so that they don't sit together. Okay, the parts are all separated. Make sure that everything's submerged and we'll hit the go button again. Smoking. Now while that's happening and these have been rinsed off, 
they can be put to dry and we'll get this bonnet catch which is now rust free into the fresh rainwater or deionized water to wash off the acid and that can be the next thing to be electroplated. It's a huge surface area. I might have to change transformers. You can see that these parts look far from being perfect. That's because they were heavily rust pitted when I pulled them off the vehicle. I've chosen not to go for the bright finish because they won't look good. Instead, I've gone for a more durable, heavier zinc coating, which will give them, hopefully, another 25 or 30 years of protection. Things that can go wrong. You could leave stuff in for too long and the zinc coating builds up so thick that it actually becomes furry. Don't do that. Uh, what else can go wrong? Uh, you could leave it in the acid for too long and heavily pit the surface, which will give you a bad surface texture. Make a bad job of the cleaning, which means that wherever dirt, grease, wax or oil is on the surface, it won't plate. But really, that's about it. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be playing with the sugar, which is used as a brightener, and hopefully that will give us a much nicer surface finish. <laughs>